On August 8th, Michigan Outdoors was granted an interview with Governor John Engler, a governor who, in almost one year in office, hasn't done anything with the organization or management of the DNR. And our main concern was sportsmen's license money. Can we ever get this $50 million channeled back into fish and game programs? Is there any chance that, that sportsmen, and what we're going to be analyzing, Charlie Keenan is going to be analyzing what the DNR is actually doing in fish and game management, that used to occupy the whole ball of wax, we're going to compare what we're getting out of the DNR for hunting and fishing compared to what we're putting in, and we know that it's a big sure. discrepancy. I will will, will, will I we be able to set that back in balance? Sure, and uh, I think the thing I want to see is when that when you're done, you're, you're, we want to make when sure I'm that... I'm done. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> if this I mean, doesn't get solved, I'll <laughs> never be done. <laughs> <laughs> no, with, with your analysis when you're done mm -hmm. with that. And we want to make sure that you've got access to any of the data that you mm -hmm. need. I mean, if all the records are open, and they should be. And, and take it apart, put it back together, and say, this is what is, and this is what we think should be. You know, and let us have an opportunity to react to that, because I think that's uh, exactly what we want to see. And I'd encourage anybody to do that, because it, it helps me... Uh, in some cases, ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. Now, this new commission that's being formed, you know, still has the responsibility statutorily to pick that director. They've said they want to pick a director that is going to be somebody that can work with the governor's office, and I take them at their word, and I hope that when they get down to that point where they've got some final names, they'll be talking to me. They haven't yet, but mm -hmm. uh, I expect they will. Well, I would hope that you call the shot on it. You ought to, the last governor did. Well, he, he made some mistakes, so doing it the well, way he did I know it, he did, but he called the shots on it. And I guess one thing that really has, has undermined my faith is the DNR commission stood up and told the press, we never talked to the governor. He never said a thing about that. And yet, privately, the same commissioner said, we had to, or we would've, he would have booted us off the commission. Yeah. And I said, what kind of integrity does a commission have to tell the public there was no influence and say the governor picked? I mean, I'm, do yeah. it, John. Do so, it. Well, if I do, I got a new bumper a sticker slogan here. I mean, <laughs> well, my my approach is to is to is to work in a collaborative way. What I'd like to have is I'd like to have a list of three or four very strong mm -hmm. candidates, all of whom are acceptable, and then the, you know let the commission decide which one they want. But I don't think that uh, you know, and I think the search has to be comprehensive enough that we really talk about how do we how do we change the culture of you know, the dis way we've been making decisions. How do we end some of the adversarial relationships, whether they're between, uh, you know, the hunting and fishing community or people that are trying to get a site cleaned up or people that are trying to get a determination as to what standard is acceptable. Is there any chance that the hunting, and, the Game and Fish Protection Fund, which is about $50 million, is there any chance that we can get that on a budget of its own? I mean, this has been proposed over the past few months, even within the current DNR, just so that money is matched with what we're getting for it. If that, um, we'll look at that. I mean, I, I think all of this, we've been on the, you know, pell-mell pace since the mm -hmm. first of the year with the billion dollar deficit that we inherited. We hope to get the 92 budget done so that it gives us some time to be uh, more thoughtful, uh, more, uh, I guess, uh, methodical in going through piece by piece some of the parts of the budget. We had great difficulty when Mr. Hales was at the Department of Natural Resources because we didn't feel that we were getting any kind of an accurate feedback in the comment you made earlier about the... Join the group. <laughs> well, thank I you. Mean, really? So that, that's changed. I think Del Rector on an interim basis was doing a solid job, but uh, you know, we, we need to have stability up top and, and down through the ranks. And one of the reasons we've gone very carefully uh, forward on these reorganization efforts is that point I made earlier, this constantly, the department's been constantly reorganized, almost on an annual basis, it seems like, mm -hmm. and, and and I want to... Well, you know, it, when is somebody going to say, it's too big? We've got to subdivide it here, and, you know, isn't that possible? This is one agency that has just grown. Well, that's, I mean, we've we've looked at that because I publicly raised that issue, and, you know, that, that set off a firestorm of... of comment. Uh, well, it was reported so, that you made a campaign promise to split the DNR. Not to split it. Uh, I said that I would split the natural resources and environmental protection functions. And whether I, and we're in the department today, we have these two major divisions mm -hmm. there. I think that there's still too much of a, uh, I guess, confusion about who's got what role over oh, there. Yes. And I think there are some things that can, and I'm particularly concerned on the environmental side and I think while that's a problem what you've got is all the focus there and you you end up with the natural resources side then suffering almost a, a benign neglect.
The governor knows the plight of the sportsmen. He recognizes the neglect of our concerns and the misuse of license fee money. But his request to look over the list of prospective DNR directors from the DNR commission was ignored. On September 12th, the commission appointed Raleigh Harms, a man who the governor had never met. One week after he was appointed, the new director invited me down for a discussion. Well, first of all, I uh, wanted to meet with you today because I've seen some of your shows and it bothered me that some of the, some of the feedback that you've been getting from the department <clears throat> regarding the questions you, you answered. And uh, I, I wanted you to come here today to tell you that the doors of this department are open to you and to anyone from the media and that uh, we'll provide answers to the questions you ask and we're not gonna, we're not gonna try and duck you. And uh, I think you raise, uh, you raise some good questions and I've already met with the wildlife division to ask them to prepare a response to the letter that you provided and they indicated to me that they've got seven pages of answers which uh, they, wanna, they want to uh, review among themselves a little bit and then they're gonna send it to you. And then uh, I suggested that once you got the letter that we follow up and have a meeting so that we can discuss, uh, you know, the questions that you have and the answers that uh, that were provided, and if uh, there, if there's some areas that we don't agree on, and we're going to dig into it and find out uh, the allegations that you're making, uh, how correct they are, and and if there's some problems here, we'll fix them. That interview was two weeks ago, and as of this date, we still have not received the answers to our questions about the apparent fudging of the hunting and fishing license system by the DNR. But yesterday, October 2nd, I was called down by Representative Tom Alley to show our TV reports and answer questions by the House Natural Resources Committee about our findings on the DNR. I testified for 45 minutes. The DNR was not present, but will be at the committee hearing next Tuesday. What we're going to do is request that the department come before us next week with um, not just an answer, but a, an explanation from their perspective of how they see the allegation which have been presented. So it's been five weeks now that the DNR has remained silent on questions they've promised to answer. Maybe next Tuesday they'll tell the truth to Representative Alley's Legislative Committee. We're going to be there with our cameras and hopefully we'll bring you some real answers next week.